and uh, being back out here, obviously, after an amazing year last year. Uh, well, it's something to build on, and it was a special year last year. But as I told them, that's in the books. Now we got to move forward. Uh, we certainly have to uh, look at our personnel, and uh, there was a lot of great uh, production uh, that a lot of those guys who graduated uh, you know, was able to uh, help us secure the eight wins and get us to our second bowl game in 100 years of football. So, uh, But I know these kids have worked extremely hard. It's a very close group, uh, very solid. Uh, you know, mindset when it comes to the fundamentals and the importance of working on that. And I saw that today for the first day. Uh, but we've certainly got a lot of work to do on both sides of the ball. But I'm going to be excited to see both back ends really compete, our defensive backs and our receivers. That's the area that I really want to see in this first week, really pick it up and uh, really step up and give us the kind of, uh, you know, inside look that we're looking for and the kind of production that was lost by some of the guys that left. You mentioned the guys that left a couple of times. Obviously, that starts with... Khalil and about to be a top 10 pick most likely. What do you do to, obviously one man doesn't replace him. What do you do to get the whole linebacker core ready to replace him? Well, I think when you have leadership like Lee Skinner and Jake Stockman, um, you know, we saw Jared Franklin last year as a true freshman. You know, I'm going to be excited about Solomon Jackson. You know, he's a young man we registered last year. Uh, but I think Travis Pizanka and Greg Liss, and I think the combination of those guys with the leadership uh, that starts with our two seniors and Skinner and Stockman are going to be able to produce uh, uh, the kind of activity that we want up front, being disruptive, being a sound fundamental defense, keep executing the schemes that we have in place. You know, the great thing is we've got uh, one of the best coordinators in the country, the guy who does a great job of getting those kids, uh, you know, lined up and uh, take advantage of their strengths. And uh, we certainly have to make up for uh, the kind of production that Khalil had, forcing fumbles, tackling behind the line of scrimmage, obviously intercepting passes, putting the ball in the end zone. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting year for us to see which guys step up and really, uh, really add to the dimension of our defense. Can you talk about the weapons that return around Joe? Well, I'd like the, the big guys up front. That big weapon up there is the, the number one group that I'm looking for. I think our tight ends with uh, Matt Weiser and, and Mason Shrek uh, certainly are two guys that have really, uh, really developed in the offseason. Uh, when I look at the back, uh, the back behind Joe, our two tailbacks, when Devin Campbell and Anthony Taylor, both guys are very talented and can certainly make up for a lot of the production that Bo gave us. Uh, but it's on the perimeter. You know, it's guys like Devin Hughes and John Dunmore, two seniors that really need to step up with their leadership, but really see guys like Boise Ross uh, continue to grow uh, and be those playmakers, Malcolm Robinson and Marcus McGill. I've really enjoyed uh, watching how they've really matured under the leadership of Alex Nutz and, and Freddie Lee. So, you know, it's going to be kind of a, a, an interesting uh, 15 practices. We're one down, we got 14 to go, uh, but I like where their mindset is. They've done a great job in the classroom. Uh, they've had a great uh, winter conditioning. Uh, seven weeks, and so it's going to be exciting to see where they are uh, when we're done with 15 weeks. How much does it worry you that, that Joe Lacan is not out here today? And obviously, going to be a little bit more before he's out there slinging the ball around. Well, certainly for Joe, you know, he's been in working extremely hard. You know, he's uh, certainly a very sharp mind. You know, he's got a good handle on the offense. Uh, but it's going to provide some opportunities for Tony and, and Colin. Uh, those guys are going to have to take full advantage of their opportunities. And, and that's the way we always talk about that mantra of next bowl in. And those opportunities present themselves. Uh, guys got to step up and really show that leadership and that quality of play. Um, you, you know, if Joe's not in there, then somebody else got to step in there. But Joe's going to still be the guy that we're going to uh, really uh, – you know, develop into being even a better quarterback than he was a year ago. And uh, his leadership is showing. So even though he may not be on the field, he's doing it on the sidelines. He's doing it behind there. He's encouraging guys, and he's really kind of cluing them in on some of the key things that he understands about our offense. Last year was arguably the best year in program history for UB. How do you keep that, that momentum flowing into this season? Well, certainly we've got to have that, uh, you know, a better finish. You know, we got to get better. We need to finish. Uh, you know, exactly where we wanted to be, um, and that's in Detroit, you know, and, and that was certainly, we were close, uh, but we certainly didn't finish, and to be able to do that, we have to be complete, and uh, we have to be completely uh, locked in. Everybody wants to get to the same place, we all know that, but the bottom line is we all on the same page. And that's what we have to do with this football team is continue building on something special that occurred a year ago. They had living proof of what it took. They saw a great group of seniors that demonstrated the kind of work ethic, the kind of passion, determination, leadership that you want. Uh, so now they got to build on it. They experienced it. They learned from it. Now they got to build on it. Coach, what's it like for you not to have 